we're talking today about communication and the way that you make your communication as impactive as possible. So I wanted to talk a little bit about the um, qualities that we apply when we're communicating across the business and externally as well to the marketplace. Starting with the clarity of the message and who we want, the who the audience is. Um, from there we always check our data and the accuracy of the facts that we're talking about. Um, we ensure that our communication is concise, so wherever possible avoiding jargon and using simple language to ensure the message hits the mark. Um, we try wherever possible to use a conversational style to make sure that we get as much interaction as possible from our audience. And lastly, we apply consideration to our communication methods making sure that our message is understood and engaging the audience such that we get feedback wherever possible as well. So your activists, thinking about how you would tailor your communication to them, an activist doesn't generally need a lot of information for them to, to get going with whatever the task is or the activity. They'd be quite happy to just have a go and learn through the experience. Whereas your reflectors on the other hand, would want to obtain that information, have that communication given to them, but then they would like to have time to absorb, internalise and process that information before they do take action. Your theorists on the other hand, if you remember from, from our programmes, your theorists like to have a lot of information, they like to understand how things fit together, so they're likely to ask quite a lot of questions, um, but the reason why they're doing that is because in order for them to process that information or to learn that new task, they need to understand the ins and outs and how it fits in. And then finally, your pragmatists. As a pragmatist, they're, they're quite good at, they're quite practical people, um, and they like to see links to um, other things that they've perhaps had experience of in the past. So your pragmatist, um, the way that you can aid their communication is getting them to understand how this new thing that you're talking to them about relates to something that they've got previous experience on. So enabling them to, to make those links and you helping them on that journey. It always helps to use uh, video conferencing, VC or Skype wherever possible. Um, it helps you to get to know someone much better when you can put a, a face to the name um, and it's much easier for presentations and meetings um, where you know, the visual aspect is needed. It's important to embrace technology. Where possible use VC rather than the phone. Over the telephone it's really hard to pick up on body language and facial expressions. We've also learnt that VC does have its pitfalls, the time delay for example, um, but it is much preferred to using the phone. When preparing for your meeting, be sure to send out an agenda. It really helps to accommodate the different learning styles and allows people to be a lot more prepared for the meeting. It's important to keep everybody involved. I mean, local conversations are great, but it's very important that you talk across site to make sure that everybody's got the key points and are working on the same page. Understand the benefits of working in smaller and larger groups. Sometimes it's easy to think we'll just all get together and have one large meeting, but it doesn't give everyone the opportunity to speak. Breaking down into smaller groups can give those a little less confident the opportunity to have their say and can sometimes actually get you to your objective quicker. It's important to recognise the different workloads and roles of individuals. For example, if someone has back-to-back -back meetings and they're in, going from one floor to another, it can take five minutes. So it doesn't necessarily reflect on their commitment to the meeting if they're late.